Welcome back to You Too Can Make From Scratch. Today, we're going to start with pie crust. We're going to make two different varieties. We're going to start with traditional pastry crust. You're going to start with a quarter, one and a quarter cup of flour, and half a quarter teaspoon of salt, and half a cup of butter. Some recipes call out for shortening. Shortening and butter are directly substitutable. Uh, there are differences in the baking and the output, but the taste is this, pretty much the same, especially when you're dealing with pies. And if you happen to be a layperson when it comes to cooking. Also, some recipes call for a particular pastry blender, which looks kind of like a weird claw kind of thing. It's not necessary, especially when you're going to just be using a fork for the majority of your recipes anyway. You're going to make make sure you mix all of the butter salt together. Make sure you incorporate it all. And then you're going to start incorporating your butter. It needs to be softened and you're just going to continue to blend it in until you have it incorporated where it's pretty much all the size smaller than a pea. What the butter does is when it melts and expands it's going to expel uh, gases which is going to help it's going to give your pastry a flaky texture and uh, make it taste a little good because a little fat in pastry is a good thing. Now that we got our butter incorporated we're going to take some ice water a quarter cup to a third of a cup just incorporating it very slowly we just want to get the dough soft and moist all moist. And let's face it, moist is just better than dry. The amount of water you're going to use is going to depend on a lot of factors, including uh, your butter, which every brand of butter is going to be different. It's based on the, what the cows ate and had the processing to make it into butter. This is why when uh, on cooking shows, they always have another one ready just so they don't have to just do this all day on camera. Once all the water is incorporated and your dough is nice and moist, you're going to use your hands and just knead it together into a little ball. If you're going to make a covered pie with some decoration, with dough decorations on the top, you're going to want to double the recipe and make two servings. The reason why ice water is used is because you're warm and you don't want the dough to get too warm while you're working it so the ice water helps to keep it cool once our dough is incorporated we're going to turn it out onto a lightly floured surface turn out basically means you're just putting it out you're going to make yourself a nice little circle and use a rolling pin to get it nice and flat. I don't happen to have a rolling pin, but any flat, hard surface will work. You're going to want to flour it so that the dough doesn't stick. Roll from the center outwards so that you have a good, a good flat, round pie crust. Try to roll it evenly and consistently so your pie crust is even and consistent. And you're going to want to actually use pressure because if you don't, you're going to be rolling it all day. There. Now that we got our pie crust all flattened out, we're going to put it in our baking device. How you do that, you're going to take it. Cooking books recommend you roll your dough onto your rolling pin. Take it over your cooking utensil and roll it out. Make sure your pl plate is nice and uh, covered. Press it into all your nooks and crannies. Take a knife and cut off the excess. Now, the kind of cooking pan you're using is going to depend on personal preference. Some people like decorative. Some people like standard. Some people like metal, some people like uh, cast iron. Uh, the different cooking implements 
have different properties based you know different heat transfers and whatnot you will never see a professional touch up their dough we're not professionals are we as long as it's covered that's all that matters and there is our pie crust all nice ready to be either pre-baked or used in a recipe whether a pie crust is pre-baked or not depends on the recipe it all depends on how fast the crust is going to cook compared to its innards if you're going to use a pre-baked or par-baked or blind-baked crust all of these mean the same thing you're going to want to cover it in foil and weigh it down the weights are not absolutely necessary but they help to prevent puffing up and getting uneven and it has to be something that's going to survive being baked at 375 degrees for 5 to 15 minutes. Now we're going to move on to our graham cracker or or wafer crust. This is a very this is a different type of crust for a different type of pie but in the end it does the same thing. This one does need to be pre-baked so you're going to preheat your oven to 375 degrees. How long it takes to get to that temperature depends on the oven itself. If you are fastidious about your temperatures, don't trust your oven's temperature zone. Use an oven temperature monitoring device. If you're looking for a suggestion on that, I recommend Alton Brown. He is a very fastidious cook and a great instructor on the cooking arts. Now, for a graham cracker or wafer crust, you're going to start with finely crushed up or ground graham crackers or wafers vanilla, chocolate, what have you. You can use your hands or you can use a coffee grinder. If you're going to use a coffee grinder, one cracker at a time. So, because if it gets too built up, it's not going to work out too. If you're using store-bought graham crackers, it's about one and a half packages of those. Now, you're going to take your crushed up graham cracker and a third cup of butter. And a third cup of butter. Melt it. The chemical properties of butter change when it is melted. So if your recipe calls for softened butter, make sure it's not melted. If your recipe calls for melted butter, melt it. To melt this, we're going to put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds. And what you do, you take it, pour it in, and mix it up. And then you're going to add your quarter cup sugar. In this case, your butter is for a bite is acting as a binder it's holding your crust together it's not going to get completely wet it's just going to moisten up and it's going to set in the oven then you take your pie your pie sheet lightly grease it some recipes call for non-stick cooking spray i prefer for oil in this case it's olive oil it's a little italian i know but it's a nice flavor i like it you're going to spread it around your pie tin, or in this case, pie saucer, and put in your crust. Spread it around nice and easy, nice and even, and once it's even, you're going to put it in that oven you just heard go off, and bake it for about five minutes, and then you'll be ready to make your pie. Be sure to join us next time when we actually put some stuff in these crusts, we're going to be making pumpkin pie from scratch. Don't party too hard.